wow, I have just turned up to London Links and what an entrance, what a drive to get here. This place looks phenomenal. I've only ever driven through it. I've never stopped, I've never parked up to have an exploration of the place. So my excitement is palpable. I'm, uh, I'm waiting to meet up with my usual drone guy, Stephen's brother-in-law, Jack. So I think he's calling me actually. Uh, ah, yes, he's calling me. Wow, wow, we were. Hello. You know what this is, eh? This is spring. Spring is in the air, I can smell it. I don't know if anyone else has uh, seasonal senses, but I can smell spring and I am excited. But what I'm also currently excited about, other than the daffodils, is this. Thing is, I've driven through London Links so many times, you know, playing football through Fife, you're always driving up this way to go and get whipped off Pitt and Weem or someone like that or St Monin's, but I've always come past this and thought, that looks like a haunted building if I ever have seen one. Tell me this isn't haunted, come on. I'm getting heart palpitations just standing outside this. Uh, but it's heavily fenced off, so I don't think I can get in because I'm a law-abiding ginger citizen, but Man, I don't know if I would go in. The spooky London Lynx Hotel. Look at this. Wow. I think I can retire the cap. I think I can retire the cap. The cap's getting retired, like, unless there's another beast from the east. Where's the drone? Hey drone, I'm um, just having a wander down to the beach, the weather's amazing, I'm dazed by the sun, there's a drone in the sky, like what a day to be, what a day to be out filming, London Lynx, I have never stopped here and today I'm thinking why have I never been here, look at this place, this is literally perfect, it doesn't get more perfect than this, Dramoke Road, we're on Dramoke Road, there's a drone, It is really a day to be thankful um, and to really appreciate what we've got right on our doorstep. Like this is, you know, 20 minute drive, 30 minute drive from Recife. You're right up the coast, St Andrews, somewhere along there. You know, you've got the Weems locked down there. Look, there's Kirkcaldy, just in long distance. Buckhaven, you know, this is fantastic. Um, and Fife is a special place and this is a place to to celebrate how beautiful Fife is. Man, I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting any of this today. On the left, we have some beautiful houses. In the back of that, we have a viaduct that I wasn't aware of. Um, but now I am, and I'm excited. There's so much to learn about this place, so much to see. And here we've got the Crusoe Hotel, named after Robinson Crusoe. Private car park. Oh man, I'm excited. Being tracked by the drone. Everything is, is perfect today. Look at this, we've got the Joan Fernandez Lounge, 
I can't believe these two amazing hotels in this town are shut. It's completely crazy. You know, look at the period we're going through where people are really the renaissance of holidaying in our own country. This is what we're going through. We're going through a renaissance. Look at this. It's, it's looking over to the bloody beach. I am gobsmacked that this is shut. This is a beachside hotel in possibly one of the most beautiful places in Fife that I have ever seen. And I say that everywhere I go, but I really mean it. I really, really mean this. I cannot believe this. Check it out. Now apparently, there's a statue of Robinson Crusoe somewhere about here. This is uh, tens, tens, tens across the board. I can't believe that's not open. Wow. There's Andy's store. Comes up for Andy's store. They've got DeVito's ice cream. Is DeVito still open? Look at this place. Right, okay, so this is Lower Largo. Wah wah wee wah. Look at this. It's got a right Tudor feel to it. That sign says Robinson Crusoe statue. I'm all over that. I'm all over that. The Railway Inn established 1749. Man, imagine just sitting out here having a nice cold beer. Look at this. You wanna feel like you're back in time? Come for a beer here. Oh, is the statue up here? Where can I kinda in front of people's houses right now? Would this statue be up here? It's a thing with these old Towns and villages, they have these strange and absolutely stunning little narrow walkways where you're not quite sure if you're in anyone's garden. But that's fine, everyone's super friendly. CCTV in operation. There's something up there. What was here? Oh. I was just listening to Andy talking to a, a customer there from Andy's store and the bench out the front has been taken from wood from an abandoned railway Look at all the different people Oh wow, everyone together doing their bit, feeding each other holding each other together, supporting each other Don't know if you can see it as well as I can with the sun but thumbs up to this, look at this place Wow, where we were I am lost for words right now. Lost for words. <laughs> it's private, but look at this. It's got all the the decorations. Fishermen's and boobies. And just in amongst all this marvellous, fantastic beauty, we have a church. Don't know if it's active. It's got a mark on the building of 1871. So I think it's about time I started looking into the history of this place because it's taken my breath away. Look at all the different architecture. Look at this building. And then look at this building. And look at that building. Everything is unique. <clears throat> and it's the uniqueness that creates the character, creates the identity.
can hear the drone. I can hear it. Oh look, there's the statue. 1885, look at this. So, cracking doors. I don't know if this is someone's house or not, I think it is. In memory of Alexander Selkirk, Mariner, the original of Robinson Crusoe, who lived on the island of Juan Fernandez in complete solitude for four years and four months. He died 1723, Lieutenant of HMS Weymouth, aged 47 years. This statue is erected by David Giles, net manufacturer on the site on the cottage in which Selkirk was born. There you go, wow. That is lovely. Morning. Morning. It's incredible, isn't it? So just as I was at the Crusoe statue, I stopped and started speaking to a guy. Um, what a gentleman, what a gentleman. And we just had a nice chat about this place. So really what we've done is we've stumbled to the statues we asked them. This is Lower Largo. So then I've obviously prompted me to do a little bit of research and reading. So this is a, a village, or London Lynx was a village in the parish of Largo. Um, built up in the 19th century. The London Lynx name refers to the family who owned the land, the London family. So thus we have London Lynx. Now, I did plan to just do London Lynx, but because, you know, it's just straight through, there's no sort of point, real point of referral between either. I've just decided this is gonna be a Largo Lynx episode. We'll call it Largo Lynx. I like that. Look how stunning it is. Interesting fact I was reading. I don't know if it's true. I hope it's true. Um, but lead singer of the band Radiohead, Tom York, was raised in London Lynx. So if you're watching this, Tom, it'd be great if I could use some of your Radiohead music for one of my videos. That'd be pretty sweet. Cause I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo And what the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here I belong in Lower Largo <laughs> Hiya Hello Enjoy, beautiful <laughs> Look at this Palm tree This is insane. Lower Largo is the most exotic place in Fife. I've just said it. It's exotic. What is this? Ah, see, look. Upper Largo, Lower Largo, London Lynx. So I guess we're just going to end up calling this the Largo Lynx. It has to be called the Largo Lynx. So you can see it on the map here. Where are we? We're here somewhere. Somewhere here. There we are. The Lynx, that's where we are. So, London Lynx is a late 19th century development, seaside villas and golf courses extending west from the old villages of London Mill and Emsdorf. To the northwest stands a 16th century tower. North of the road on the ladies' golf links are three standing stones, once part of a prehistoric stone circle. North of the road on the ladies' golf links are three standing... So I have to go to the golf course, I've got to try and find these. Lower Largo or sea town of Largo grew up later than Upper Largo when the fishermen moved down to live where the boats were beached. It now includes the once separated hamlets of Temple and Drummickey. That's it, we were on Drummickey Road, or street, one of them. We were there. When the inshore fishing declined, weaving provided alternative employment. The pier was built around 1770 so that grain, potatoes and salt could be shipped out and iron and timber imported. The present Crusoe Hotel we've been there was originally a granary. The pier extended in the early 19th century when a regular ferry service ran to New Haven, one of the ports of Edinburgh. This was replaced by the railway which came in 1857 and whose viaduct now dominates the harbour. So we've seen the viaduct, so now we know that it came in 1857. There's loads on here. Behind Upper Largo rises Largo Law, the remains of a volcano. That's that big hill you see on the way in. And at 290 metres is the highest hill in East Nuke. There we go. Upper Largo or Kirkton of Largo, an old farming and fishing community. Lies slightly inland, safe from sea raiders. The church includes the spire dates from the 1620s, but was added to and restored to in the 11th century. 
Just inside the gate stands an 8th century Largo stone with a cross on one side, Pictish symbols and a hunting scene on the other. Man, there's so much history here. This is like an absolute gold mine of a place to visit. The most in famous inhabitant, Alexander Selkirk, was born in 1679 and his adventures who inspired Daniel Defoe's story of Robinson Crusoe, published in 1719. It's an old story. Uh, and again, there are many attractive walks in the area, as well as the coastal path. There is a serpentine walk, the old tree-lined path linking up in Lower Largo inland. There is a sheltered valley of Keel's Den and a panoramic view from the top of Largo Law. That's where we need to go. Well, here we go. Near the church are the gates of Largo House, now a ruin, which was designed by John Adam in 1750. Behind it stands Woods Tower, all that remains of an earlier house. Earlier still was the castle of Admiral Sir Andrew Wood born in Largo in the mid-15th century. He loyally served James III and James IV as captain of the King's ship, the Yellow Carvel, defending the fourth against several English attacks. In thanks, he was knighted and given the lands of Largo. In the field opposite Kirkton of Largo School can be seen the track of a canal which be, he had dug so that he could travel to the church by boat. Mic drop. This is one of those places where you just feel truly and utterly inspired. Like in a creative sense, in an industrious sense, in a productivity sense, everything is just through the roof in a place like this. As I said, tens across the board. That's me just saying bye to Jack on the drone, and it's now back on my own. Um, and as I say, I'm no longer calling this London Links, I'm calling this Largo Links. Hope that doesn't offend anyone. Wow. I mean, if you want to talk about a day getting better and better and better and better, there's a tree swing up there. Would you believe it? For the first time in six months, it's t shirt weather. Right, let's go and suss this out. Don't know what's going on. Some sort of makeshift. I don't know if that's. I think that would just swing into the tree. Sometimes when you find the tree swing, you say pass. Uh, you just say pass. I'm not interested today. What's up here? So I found myself on a little surprising woodland walk. I didn't know if there would be a woodland walk here or not. Sometimes the seaside towns don't have the woodland walks. But I tell you what. This place has just got a little bit of everything, of course. I can smell fish. What have we got here? It's the Woodland Trust Scotland. They welcome me. Thank you. Tagged. The land doesn't poison the sea. One that has enough respect for each other and the planet we live on and all the other life forms that share this planet that we live on. One that has enough respect for all of that to live in a way that's completely sustainable. Look at this. Do you know, it's moments like this that I wish I could bring everyone with me to experience these moments in time because it's so precious and so fantastic. Um, and I understand that not everyone has the ability to get to these places or has the ability to access them. Um, and I personally know this. I used to look after a guy uh, over in Edinburgh who had some profound disabilities. And a lot of what I do came from this understanding that he was watching a lot of YouTube and living this vicarious life through other people. And we had such a deep connection and it was, 
at heart what inspired me to do this. So when I hear the nice messages and people getting in touch with me and all of that, it really deep down touches me because that's exactly what keeps me doing this. The people who appreciate what I'm doing and they get something from it. Um, and I ha we all have these memories together. You know, right now, at this moment in time, I'm talking to a camera, but, you know, if time isn't a line, I'm talking to you right now. Shout out to Robert Walker, um, Louise Cameron, and who's the other one? And Donna Forrester for sending me tips. That's fantastic. I was able to get my coffee this morning, and that generosity and that kindness really helps me do what I do and gives me more time to do this uh, and give a lot more time to it. So thank you so much. It means a lot. Um, yeah. So if anyone does want to do that, I'll put my PayPal link at the bottom. Get me a coffee, just whatever, 50p. Get a few 50p's, I'll get a coffee. Happy days. Um, and I've also got my Patreon account as well. Um, so you get your name at the end of the episode if you join the Patreon. And I pop up a video every month, some behind the scenes stuff. Extra footage, you know how it goes. So aye, back to this area. Got to find it. So this is the Fife Coastal Path out of the area. So we need to head back in. So this is the... Largo Serpentin. Right, so I'm heading into Upper Largo now. I met an absolutely super friendly lady who has sent me through the Serpentine the Serpentine Woods. Um, so I'm gonna head up through that way. Me bumping into the people, talking to them as I go. Sometimes I don't, I don't want to be rude and just film them as I'm talking to them. I like people to have their privacy and I like those conversations to be more authentic rather than with the camera on. So we had that conversation and she's given me my next route to go on and that's how I like to film the day. Not too much of a plan, not too much of I need to do this because that just caused me to stress. I'm on route to, to, to Upper Largo because we've got... This started off as London Links but it's turned into three areas pretty much. Just smashed them all out in one day, I said. Go for it, have a fun time, he said. Film as much as you can, he said. The daffodils are out. Spring sale. Well, yes, I have enjoyed my visit. Thank you very much for having me. Now, show me the way to Upper Largo. I think this is up here, underneath the volcano. Look at this. I love this sign. Look at this. Get them on Facebook. Pass some groomers. Tell you what, you get plenty of uh, bang for your buck. In this area of Scotland, in this area of Fife, I should proudly say, this is phenomenal. Man, it's got everything in the, the Largo links. Each village has its own personality, character, and together, wow, we've got the Megazord. Oh, M, Jesus. Oh, M, Jesus, look at this. Church architecture is like second to none, some of the finest there is on the planet, anywhere. And as churches go, this is up there with Mark Inch. This is up there with St. Monin's. Ah, oh, there's a monkey puzzle tree. It literally has everything here. There's a monkey puzzle tree. Look at this. Oh, a weaver. Whew. 
See? That's why I bumped into that woman. She directed me here because I was not walking in this direction. And yeah, I'm so what a building. It is literally one of the nicest churches I've been to. Again, the weather today just makes everything look its best. It's a, everything looks at optimum today. Well, not quite yet. We need a little bit more sunshine, a little bit more greenery. And oh boy, spring is bringing that to us. Look at this place. Come on. Put my hands up. I'll live here. If this place will take me, you can have me. This could be my new home. Largo. London Links. Largo Links. Slab? Is it a gravestone? Is it a tomb? It's got a code. What is in here? Just inside the gate stands an 8th century Largo stone with a cross on one side, Pictish symbols and a hunting scene on the other. Man, there's so much history here. This is like an absolute gold mine of a place to visit. It's pretty cool though. I love it. on a whole other level a whole other level it's got monkey trees in the churchyard monkey puzzle trees the church bell just dumped and it's one o'clock typical so we just got the one thing up here we are now at the Largo cemetery it's always nice to come and reflect cemeteries do one thing for us all is that they remind us that this life isn't forever we have to take a moment to stop and appreciate everything we have around us. And as you see through the Ginger Man tour, there's a lot to be thankful for. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me have everlasting life. <laughs> well, I'm so glad I came here. So up ahead we've got the signs for Ely, Anstruther, Creo, Collinsborough. Ely is on my radar. And so is Cooper. Yes. If you're listening, Cooper, I'm coming to you very soon. It's just a wee preempted warning, Cooper. The ginger man is coming to town. What have we got here? Private residence. Look at this place. You know, we always like the idea of uh, going back in time and studying history and the, that whole sort of magical feeling of it all, but I'll tell you one thing, it must have been cold back in the day. Everyone's cold all the time, cold and hungry. So I guess it's nice to look at the buildings, but ultimately it probably would have sucked. So this is Kingdom Housing Association, private residence. They got some, they got some building. Look at this, John Wood's Houses, founded 7th of July, 1659. That's older than my mum. Oh, we've got the Simpsons Institute. What a building. Now we're coming to the end of this place. So, once I... Once I turn back round, I'm going to head back to London Links and I'm going to link it all together. I mean, look at this, out of all the places to be twinned with. Juan Fernandez, Chile, Robinson Crusoe Island, take that everywhere else. Castaway Lane, that's what they've done there. The Robinson Crusoe theme to this place. Castaway Lane, I'm going insane in Castaway Lane. There was, uh, they, d they discovered, um, I think it was a 5th century cemetery in the area, so there's that sort of physical evidence that this place uh, has been a place of people settling for a very long time. 
Also, interestingly, there are records of the Knights Templar holding lands to the east of the town in the 12th century and was made a borough of barony by Sir Andrew Wood in 1513, which meant it had the ability to erect a Merkit cross. There we go, dropping some Largo knowledge on you. So this viaduct is no longer in practical use um, as it was a victim of the 1965 restructuring programme of British Railways known as the Beeching Cuts. It's just picturesque with the, the village and everything that goes on here. Phenomenal. So just behind me we've got the Stuarts of Buckhaven, Bakers and Butchers. So I think that's this side of Fives answer to Baines and they do great fudge donuts. I know that because I've had a few. That's Jane's at 19. That must be number 19. Good idea. Here I am back where I started, interestingly enough. I've made it all the way around. There it is. The London Links Hotel. Now it's interesting, I've spoke to people along the way, mentioned how what a location this is for a building. There's a lot of anger towards the fact that this is not open and running. Because look at it. But from the outside, you know, I don't know the details um, and the financial aspects of running a building of this magnitude. But it is an absolute tremendous focal point of this absolutely beautiful part of Fife. I love it here and honestly if you haven't been up this way you need to come up here as soon as possible because the Scottish holiday renaissance is happening now. Peace.